All right, so today we are going to go over Rust and GTK. Um, mainly, we're going to find where all the documentation is, get context on some of the crates involved in that ecosystem, so we have an understanding of how to build things, and then look at some examples. Yeah? Yeah. All right, let's get it. All right, full disclosure, I did the research for this video a while back, and it looks like a lot of things in the GTK Rust ecosystem are currently in flux. Um, I can give you more details in a little bit, but more or less, repos are, be are being moved, changed, and GTK4 development is well in its way. That being said, the basics are still the same, so let's start there. And the first thing that we should probably do anytime you're trying to interact with something that's not native to your language is look up what the support is like. So if you go to the GTK website, and you can get here by going to docs, I can just show you real quick, docs, language bindings, it gives you a list of languages that are supported in version 3 and version 4. Rust support is there, at least according to this website, which means that in theory, almost anything you can do in GTK, you should be able to do in Rust as well, or using the, the bindings. That said, I got curious about what the documentation looks like so I can learn how to do this stuff. So I started off here, went to the GTK crate, looked at the documentation, was like, hmm, saw some links. So the first one to note is the project site. The project site has a list of crates that you will probably end up using at some point in time in your GTK career and that you should probably know what they do. They don't explain what they do here, but there's another page that does that. But moving on. Minimum supported versions. So this page has an example of a GTK project that you could write and build. Just an example. Using GTK 3. This is 3.16 explicitly. And then if you scroll past that, they have a list of projects that are currently using GTK. Just so you can see what other people have done in the, the ecosystem. And I clicked on a few of these, but one of them that I really liked or was surprised by was Glide. So Glide is a media player. In the Rust ecosystem, we have a media player. Who knew? Um, all right, so going back to the crates page, there's another link called online documentation. When you click on this link, you get a 404 not found. But there are other ways to find that page. And the other way that I know of explicitly is to go to the repo. And then in the repo, it is this link right here. Now I want to pause for a second because this comes into the changes I was talking about. If you notice at the top, this, this page is now deprecated. And they have a link to a new page that you should be using instead. Which in the about is linked right here. All right, so this is the new repo. I haven't been here. It's really new. You see five days, seven days, like brand spanking new. I don't know what's here, but if you want to get the documentation still, you could click on this link and then use the tabs at the top to navigate to it. All right, so let's go back to the other page. Uh, let's click on this documentation. So what does this show us, this online documentation? One, it tells us how to install GTK and take a quick glance at this. Gives us install instructions for our OS. And I'm on Linux. I'm just trying to check to see if it gives us install instructions for 4 and 3. So GTK 4 and older versions. Yeah. So you can get install instructions for both, which is good. All right, coming back to here. Um, we have the crates listed out again and I think there's another link here all right so we have the crates listed out again and then we have this documentation page it goes to GTK site meh we have tutorials examples I think tutorials is the one I really care about so when you get to this page right um, this page is important for a couple of reasons because it has one, a tutorial going over some of the basics in terms of thought and philosophy of how to approach a GTK project in Rust. 
and it gives you some of the history. Early, oh, well, I said history. I really meant context. So earlier we saw the list of different um, different crates that we can use, but none of those things explain what those crates do. Here's like a quick overview. We have GTK, which is the widget toolkit. Okay, GDK, low level functions provided by the underlying window windowing and graphics system. GDK Pix Buff, image loading and manipulation. Don't know how to say that one, but it's vector graphics. Glib, which is responsible for your data structures and utilities for dealing with them. Geo, file system abstraction. I'm gonna say Pongo, which is layout engine, text, and font handling. So now that we have like a general understanding of what some of these libraries do when you see them in the future or you see them in examples you know why they're being used for those things they, they have specialties and then this section is very important because it gives you an overview of what the bindings are like so it states here first thing to note it's very important is that the gtk objects can be cloned and it costs nothing more than copying a pointer so basically, nothing. The reason is quite simple, and I suppose you already guessed it. It's simply because GTK structs only contain a pointer to the corresponding genome objects, or GNOME objects. Uh, so that puts everything in sort of a context of cloning is okay, and it's expected, and you can do it as much as you want or need for your program to, to work, and it's fine. And then they go on to explain why cloning is safe, noting that it's not thread safe. All right, so this part is also important. This is the trait hierarchy. And the reason why this is important is because uh, the GNOME objects are built in an object-oriented manner. So you have parents and you have children. And Rust is not necessarily object-oriented language, so there had to be some finagling in terms of how this is going to get done. And in this example, they're talking about button. And they show you the, the hierarchy, right? We go from an object, widget, container, bin, button. So these are all of the parents of button. Now, if you want to mess around with button in Rust, there is a struct of button that you can mess around with. However, what they did intentionally was they split out the object, the struct, and the uh, methods. And they put the methods into traits. So if you want the button traits, then you can look at button ex, ext. If you want one of the traits or methods from one of the parents, then you look at the parent name and then ext. So in this example, we're talking about widgets. So we have a button and we're creating a label. And then we want to use one of the methods that exist from one of the parents of the button, explicitly the widget. And in order to use that method, we have to import that trait. And this is the widget EXT. So uh, just a high level takeaway is there are structs and there are traits that hold on to the, the methods. And if you want to find any of these methods, you have to look for the struct it's associated with, or like the object, and EXT at the end. It's kind of nice in terms of like looking for documentation. So those concepts are like huge in terms of just this documentation overall. And I'm glad I was able to find it because that made things a lot clearer. So then coming down here, right? Um, let's look at a few of these, specifying a version. I, I'm not sure if it was this page or another page, but one of the things they mentioned, at least in terms of GDK 3, I'm not sure if it's the same for 4, but at least for 3, there is a base version that everything is supported by. And then if you want to have access to any of the newer features in GTK3, like a different version of GTK3, then you have to explicitly request them. And here's just an example of things that you can request. Um, this warning is just to make sure that if you're requesting these features, then you have have to have that version of GTK installed. Pretty obvious, but still. 
good thing to, to warn you against. So the next thing they go over are callbacks and closers. And we already went over everything is clonable because they're just references to pointers, right? So you keep that in mind. And then if you think about GUI development, a lot of it is just callbacks and closers. And I, they have an example here, so we can go over it real quickly. And I'm going to skip over the C because I don't really know C. And we're going to look at some of the rest. So they have a button, and they have button ext, like I was saying earlier. So here's the button struct, and here are all the methods. And you're importing this, so you have access to them. So we're creating a button with the label, click me. And then we're calling button.connectClick. And connect click is more or less like the registered method for the click button. And then we're passing in a closure. And this closure is going to have access to the button and is going to set the label. So yes, this will work. But if you note here, our button is being passed in and rest ownership rules apply and then you no longer have access to button. And more or less, this documentation is trying to show you how to interact with other widgets while still having access to them later on. So this is intentional. And then here's another example where they show you that if you try to access something after you put it into the closer, you no longer have access to it because the value has been moved. Right? And then you fix that by cloning. So this is the actual very important part of this page. I mean, there are other examples in the beginning, but this is the core of it. And the core is, in this example, we have a button with a label, right? And we have the label here. And it looks like in this closer, we're going to act on the label. So before we act on it, what we do is we clone it. And because it's all just references, we're cloning a, a pointer, this clone acts on the same label. They point to the same thing. But importantly, um, after the closure is done, we still have access to the label. And dun da da da, your code is going to work. Um, I think later on they go down a more complicated example, but it's the same principle. So I'm going to skip over this. And then I'm going to come to this. Uh, because this cloning is part of the general practice of how you do programming with GTK, they are, wrote a macro for you to lessen the amount of code you have to write. Uh, just a macro to do the cloning for you. And I think down here they have an example of it, or at least a snippet of the example of how it's used. Um, here's a Windows, and I guess this is based on the example that we skipped, but more or less, they use the macro, and they pass Windows in directly, use this arrow thingy, move, and I presume that everything in here is being cloned by the macro before it's actually acted on. And then they have this other section for object-oriented Rust. I'm not going to go through this explicitly because I think we went over it at least somewhat to some degree in terms of the struct, the traits that hold the methods. And now I think in here, if I remember correctly, they have like helper methods to let you know what is a child of, what is a parent of. So you can, at, I guess, runtime, figure out the parent-child relationships to figure out what uh, traits you need to bring in to do what you need to do. The last section which they cover in here is Glade. And if you're not familiar with Glade, it is a tool which allows you to easily write GTK applications. And they have an example here, which I don't think this example is the greatest, but more or less, if you go to the Glade website, Glade is a GUI application, right? And in this GUI application, you could visually build what your application is going to look like, give it names, and then these names, well, Glade is going to generate a uh, XML file, which is what they had over here. And you can see the properties of all the things that you 
like laid out. So this one we have a GTK window as an ID window one. GTK button, ID, button one. And then in your source code, once you you're gonna link to these these IDs. And once you register to these IDs, then your struct or your in this case a button um, is going to be acting on this button. It's, uh, there are examples of this in the examples, so we'll get to see it explicitly then. But from a high level, more or less, we use a third-party application, this GUI app, to visually build a GTK application. And then, in terms of giving it its functionality, we write Rust code that binds to these different IDs. Oh, and they have an example right here. So this is us including the GTK. Sorry, this is us including the Glade application, the uh, XML. And then right here is us getting the object by the ID. And this is window one, which we did see up there as the GTK window. And this is the button one, which we also looked at, and we're getting the object. So we're just binding to it. And now that we've bound to it, we can do things like creating the method on click and then doing stuff with that as well. I'm not going to go over the rest of the book, but or at least this documentation. But in terms of me, I found this very useful in terms of getting a context of how things are built with GTK. So coming back to the GTK crate page, go to the repo. This repo, as I said before, is deprecated. Um, there are two things to note in terms of getting to examples. Before I was going to the organization and then in the organization there is examples. And originally when I was doing my research I was using these examples but it looks like everything has been moved. So now in the non-deprecated one, the new one, the examples seemingly have been put in the repo itself. So here are examples. And one thing to note that's kind of cool about this is that well, they linked all the examples, but eh? maybe all the links don't work. Some of the links work. Some of them don't. Good to know. What I wanted to show is that they put pictures of the examples being run, which I believe is kind of cool. So I don't have this repo cloned yet, so I'm going to clone it, and then we're going to look at some of these examples just to get a greater context of how things are done. All right, so I have uh, cloned the repo locally into my machine, and then we're going to go into the examples where they... Oh, just examples. E so the examples I want to look at today, because these take a long time to build, and I don't have that kind of time, are just a few of them. We're going to look at the basics, the builder pattern, and then the GTK builder basics, right? So if you want to run any of these, the way of going about doing it, and they have this on the web page. I can, let me open that again. The way of going about running it is cargo run dash dash bin basics. So let's go back to the terminal. Cargo run dash dash bin basics and this is all what the program does right click on it doesn't do anything else so let's look at the source code real quick so if we look at their source code and make this a little bit bigger this is what's there we have um, here's main let application equals GTK application new sum and they have this string here uh, a few weeks ago when I was doing the research for this, I messed around with this string and apparently the value of this string matters, at least at times. So I advise you not to change it. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's a thing. Pass in default, default, expect. So once you have your application, connect, activate, and you do build UI. And then application run args collect vector because I guess you can pass in arguments all right so in the build UI what's going on here 
we have the application, which is GTK application. And then they just do the, the basics. We're building Windows. So here we're doing it manually. Like earlier I mentioned there is Glade, which will do this for you, or you could do it in a visual manner. But that's like two examples away. So if you want to not use Glade, the way you're going about doing it is you manually create an application window. And then you do things like window set title, set border width, set position, set default size, create a button, and then you add that button to the window. So window.add and the reference to your button and do window show all. So that's what we were seeing earlier. And did I close that application? I might have. Let me bring it back up to the screen just so you can see it. And that's this. We have a window. We gave it a title. Uh, the button changed the label to click me. We didn't give it any functionality. That was it. All right, so the next one I want to look at is the builder pattern. And let's look at the source code so you can actually see the difference. So in the builder pattern, the layout is the same. We have the application, we have the connect active, and we have the build UI, right? What's different is how they go about building this stuff. So here we have a new, and then we have dot methods all along the line, and then we have build at the end. Whereas in the previous one, let me see if I can find it. So this is the previous one, which is the basic example. And instead of doing a builder pattern, we just explicitly did each and every one of these on a separate line. Window dot, window dot, window dot. And in this one, instead, what we did was new dot application dot title dot border dot blah, 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 blah. And at the end, we did dot build. Oh, we do the same thing with button where we do new dot something dot something. And then at the end, we have a build. And then like we did in the last one, they added the button to the window and it did show all. So let's run that real quick. What was the name of this? And we have the text is lock and there's a lock on it. That's interesting. The last example I want to look at is one with the builder, GTK builder basics. Here we go. So in this one, um, you can see here that in the build UI, we did the include string and then we have the builder basics dot UI, which is the Glade XML program. Now, if you go back to the here, we can look at this file real quick. Uh, one thing to note is when you're using Glade and it dumps out the XML that you could read in, it's always going to tell you the minimum version of GDK that you need for it. So pay attention to that. You don't want to fall into that trap where Glade is more advanced than the GDK version that you're trying to hit target. But anyway, we have the window, window one, we have a bunch of other stuff, button one, dialog message one, VBox. So this is what the XML looks like. And I want to take this moment to open this in Glade to see what the actual um, interface looks like in Glade. So let's do that. Let me give me a moment. And this is it. It doesn't look all that fancy, but this is it. So we have our window with our big button. And in the window, we can see that the ID is window one. And we have some other settings. We have the default width, height, and a bunch of other stuff down here that you can set as well. And then button, we have our button ID. We have the text. You can set it that you can set that here instead of in the, the Rust application. Message dialog has the ID. Mm, nothing else really here of note. And I guess it has vertical boxes in it. Yeah, it does. Okay. Vertical box. Two spaces. So maybe top and bottom. And so we have the action area. 
and then we have the label. Okay, cool. So more or less, when you're in Glade, like this is what the interface looks like, and these are some of the options you have. These are the IDs. It saves you time, ultimately. So let's exit out of this and let's build the application. So like we saw in the Glade interface, we have our big useless button. And when we click the button, we have the message dialog. And that's really it for this. So let's go to the source code. And the reason why I believe the source code is interesting is because this might be the first time we get to see the clone macro in the wild. So looking at builder or build UI, we do the include string. Because I'm guessing it was one of the preludes. I forget which one. Probably this. Builder from string. So now we have this stuff here. And now we start doing the associations. So window, say what it's going to be, application window. Get object window one and expect if you can't find it. So one thing to note here is that while we were in Glade, um, those objects have very specific names and then when you try to map to them, you have to map with the exact same objects. And there are different types of windows in GTK, so you gotta know which one you're using. You just go back to the either the XML or um, open up in Glade itself and just look at it. Set application, some application, just came through. We have our big button, which we get the object from the ID button. We have our dialog, not just dialog, builder, get object. Dialog, connect, delete event. So dialog, underscore, dialog hide, inhibit true. Sure. But what we really care about is this clicking button thing. And what we see here is we have connect clicked, which we've seen a couple times. But now we see the, the clone. So this clone macro is from the glib uh, crate, which, if we recall correctly, is responsible for the, what was it, like data structures and algorithms for related GTK stuff. And then in the example that we saw earlier, they didn't have weak. I'm not exactly sure when this was added to Rust, but it seems cool. I don't know explicitly what it does, but I have an idea. But I'll let y'all look it up. Anyway, they put weak here, dialog, have the arrow, move, underscore, and dialog show all, which presumably is a clone because we're working under this macro. And then does Windows show all? So more or less, that was the application. And if you want to see examples of how clone is used, you can look through the examples and they have a few examples of clone being used, this being one of them. All right, so originally in terms of this video, I wanted to stop there. However, I did notice some new stuff that I alluded to at the very beginning of the video that I would like to show as well, regards to GTK4. So let's open our browser again. So if we go to the GTK organization, right? We have GTK4 RS. And this is currently actively being worked on. We have things that were changed 40 minutes ago, two hours ago, four hours ago. Like this is in development right now. And some of the cool things that are here is the building a book. <laughs> All right, so I know the book is not finished yet. At least I don't think it's finished yet, and I haven't read through it yet. But the idea that they're building a book for development GTK4 just means that in the future, it's just going to be easier to do all of this stuff. And let's just skim around real quick. 
So the oddly specific <laughs> string is here. If anybody knows what these strings mean or what they allude to, put in a comment. Let me know. Much appreciated. All right, so outside of the book, I mean, just the existence of this is kind of exciting to know that GTK is actively being worked on and then there's an attempt to make learning the ecosystem around it that much easier. Just wanted to give a shout out to them. Good job. All right, so with that, we have reached the end of the video. If you like to hit like, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Outside of that, till next time. Peace.